Yes. Cool. All right. Um, my name is Dr. Ampli with Tennessee State University. I'm the director of HBCU OER with the Graduate and Professional Development of Smart Innovative Technology. We also house the Tiger Smart podcast, as well as esports and alumni engagement. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it to um, Dr. Bartley to go ahead and introduce herself. Hello, I'm Dr. Ooh, Dr. Dr. Bartley with Tennessee State University. I am the director of. Can yes, you hear I can me? Hear you now. Can you hear me, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm the um, director of alumni relation. I also work with OER and esports with Dr. Ampadu and our supervisor, Dr. Deborah Chisholm, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Hassel, would you like to go next? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dr. Robert Hassel. I am the HBCU OER student uh, coordinator. Uh, I'm so excited to meet each and every one of you and look forward to dialoguing with you about this great, wonderful world of OER and how it services our faculty and students. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Hassel. And then we have um, Ike, would you like to go next? Hi everyone, this is Ike. My, I'm a graduate assistant with the School of Graduate and Professional Studies. And I'm also a full-time student in the Department of Computer Science, Master's Student in the Department of Computer Science. Thank you. Thank you. And then we're gonna go ahead and last but not least, uh, the amazing Michaela Wiley, which I can introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, my name is Michaela Wiley. I'm also a graduate assistant in the School of Graduate and Professional Studies. Um, I work with Dr. Ampadu in OER, and I'm also a full-time student in the Masters of Public Health program at TSU. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and for the people who are here, like Dr. Smith and Dr. Golden and Dr. Yosef, would you guys like to introduce yourself so we know who we're speaking with today? Okay, I'll go on. I'm Dr. Golden, uh, a professor of uh, philosophy and religion at Thune Cookman University. Good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Kittis Youssef. I'm the department chair for justice and political studies at Bethune Cookman University. I'm a professor of criminal justice. How are everybody doing? My name is uh, Dr. Smith. I work at Simmons College. Uh, I'm a professor of critical thinking and decision making, and happy to be here. Great, great, very nice to meet you guys. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, hold on, it doesn't want to. And then any questions, please put them in the chat. It will be more than happy to get to them. Or actually, it's it's a small group. You just you know, just let me know, <laughs> and uh, I'll be more than happy to stop and answer your answer your question. So I know you guys already know about Merlo and how great it is, but sometimes we don't have time to really go in depth in regards to uh, what it really has to offer. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in real quick. So one of the benefits of Merlot, of course, you can definitely add materials that you find and you feel like it's useful and you would like to share with the Merlot community, but you can also create materials with Content Builder and you can also create um, course e-portfolios. And those two are absolutely amazing. They're very easy to use. Um, so we are going to go ahead and click on and create a create a course with ePortfolio. And so let's say if um, one, of, one of you guys wanted to go ahead and create a, a course on Merlot um, and have your students go ahead and click on and click on it. One thing that you can do and set the course title, let's say if it was, um, it was one of the,
I think one of one of the ones was religion. Um, yes, we could do mm -hmm. intro to religion. Okay, um, you could pick the course description. Um, the intro to religion. Uh, philosophy. And then the prereqs, if there are pre any pre prereqs, but since it's an intro class, we're going to put none. Um, the pedagogy of the of the class, the pedagogy of the class, and the um the pedag the pedagogic the pedagogical approach that you guys are going to use. Um, so let's say if you guys want to use the, so oh, so sorry, the taxonomy. Um, approach and then the learning outcomes. What what exactly do you want the students to learn? So you'll put your learning outcomes right here. You will also go ahead and put in the assessment methodology that you guys will use. Um, how will you guys be assessing the students? Will it be all quiz or would they be writing and typing papers? Um, just you know, will they be creating videos? Um, just put whatever how you're going to assess the student right there. And then other information that's um, that's needed and that you like the student to know. If you already have a bookmark collection, this part is important as well. But just in case you don't, it's totally okay. But if you click here, you'll be able to go through your bookmark collection to say, oh, okay, this one fits um, for this class or 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 whatever other one. Um, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and select that. No, we don't have a bookmark collection. Okay. You'll go ahead and select the I am not a robot and then select submit. And then, oh, hold on. Oh, I have to put something here. Learning outcomes um, to advance. We'll put to advance in religious studies. um we'll pick quizzes so as you see it will pull you back uh quickly <laughs> and say hey you didn't do this area can you please fill in okay cool all right great so now you have your intro to religion class right here on merlo and so let's say if you want to find the learning materials last and you don't want to find it up front for the class, you just want to create the e-portfolio, the e uh, one thing you can do is then now go to the search box and type in religion, uh, maybe not in the public schools, type in religion. I think it's still typed in religion in public schools. All right. I still keep on doing that. It keeps on auto filling it. <laughs> okay, great. Now, as you guys can see, there's 455 different type of resources that are out here on religion. So on the left hand side, you can see all the filters and in regards to the filters, you can see that you can filter it by discipline. You can filter it by material type and then also filter it by your audience. Um, and I know since you guys are well in depth when it comes to OVR, um, that you can, that, that you already know that you can filter it. So let's say if you could filter it by like online courses. So you want them to review an online course um, while you are in your religious course. So all they have to do is select bookmark. And then you can scroll down. Hold on. Actually, let me create a new bookmark. Religion. And it's always good to put the intro to religion um, information right here.
And then like if, if, if there's a course number. So if you guys have a course number, if you teach more than one intro to religion class, it's good to go ahead and put the description right here so you guys won't get confused on what bookmark is for what. Okay, great. So if I want to go back to my course e-portfolio, I can see the religion one right here. I can go to it. And then when it comes to the resources, I can add in the bookmark collection that I just made. Um, and then also, if you just want just bookmark collections that you can give your students links to, um, you can say, hey, you know, I um, there's a wealth of resources that I want you guys to look over and we'll, that we'll be using um, during the course of the semester. And then you can just click on it and then take the link. So let's say if I click right here, I could take the link to this bookmark collection and copy and paste it into my syllabus. I can copy and paste it into, um, well, we use eLearn, which is, also, which is also called D2L. You can copy and paste it inside there as well. So they're never confused on, oh my gosh, what's next? And, you know, then, then things like that. Um, but one thing also that is amazing about the creating a e-portfolio, let me see if I wanted to edit and then scroll back down. No, hold on. Sorry, not edit this part. But if I actually wanted to edit and implement Okay, sorry, add a resource. What's not? Well, it's totally okay. We'll just go back right here. So let's say for the esports one that I created or earlier. Um, so for the courses, for the course resources, you could put in any resources that you want the students to review. And then you can actually put in notes so the student will know what the assignment is. So for the eSports education playbook, like this is a dynamic book. It's amazing. You guys are going to learn this and that. Um, just please read it. And then you can put your notes right here so they're not confused. So do the first week of class. I want a two-page paper on why it's important to have a playbook for eSports. Um, and then I wrote, or you can create a five-minute video instead. So these are certain things that you can implement um, into the classroom to make it a little bit easier uh, when you're creating your courses throughout the year. Did you guys um, have any questions yet? And so you can take the link that you copied and add it here too. So you can add external Yes. You just uh -huh. add, okay, just click. Mm -hmm. You can just say add an external link. So if there is one, you just click right here and then add the title, the URL, the notes. So it doesn't have to be exactly from, from Merlot. Merlot will pull it, pull it over and implement it into your course e-portfolio. And then also like, let's say if you have um, all these resources and they're in, they're in the wrong order, like, oh my gosh, I wanted them to do this last. Um, then you just, just click these little arrows and it will move it down for you. So as you can see, it's down here now. Or if you can say, oh, I don't want this one anymore. Um, we don't have time for it. You can easily just delete it from the portfolio. So it's not a, um, and then just update the students and let them know that, hey, it has changed um, in regards to what resources I want you to read for class. But when you delete it, it doesn't delete from the bookmark. No, it does not. Right, okay. Because when you're creating the e-portfolio, it's actually creating its own collection within the e-portfolio. Yes. And then of course, um, just in case you have someone who speaks a different language, you also have the opportunity to, to change the language for the um, for the student and you see all these amazing 100 and 
86 languages that you can translate and it's ready for you. There's no, there's no, let me translate to something I, I won't get lost in. Let's do French. So you can easily, as you can see how quickly it happened, you can easily trans, um, translate this into French so that uh, whoever the French person in your class can, can understand um, the materials that you're handing out, you know, within their own language without any, um, without any barriers. So yes, so did anybody else have any additional questions on how to create an e, a e portfolio? So I know um, Dr. Golden asked about the student help, helper. Is that now Dr. Um, praise the Lord. What was his name? Uh, Dr. Hassel. Is that Dr. Hassel? Should yeah. he reach out to him? Okay. That uh -huh. is me. Yes, okay. Dr. Hassel. Okay. And then we also have like office hours that you guys can come to um, if you're having any issues. So we can send you the link for that. Um, and we can answer any questions that you have. And good afternoon, Dr. West White and the Bethune Cookman family. How are you all? Well, how are you? Hey, life is good. Um, just want to share with you a couple of updates since we are all here together. Again, um, you should have received uh, the surveys mm -hmm. uh, that we need mm -hmm. for your pilot faculty members to complete and for their students to complete. Mm -hmm. The faculty member survey takes no more than four minutes. The student survey, no more than three minutes, but we must have those surveys. <clears throat> so if you could push them to get those done for us, um, and again, I will have um, a fool to resend them um, so that they're fresh right up on the top. Again, we're asking the pilot faculty members, Dr. West White and your affiliate um, to um, complete that. That's number um, one. Number two, we're coming to the end of the semester. I don't know about Bethune Cookman, but for TSU, our graduation is November the 20th. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. We wrap, look, we wrapping this baby up. So we want to make sure that we have things in place. Now, for your affiliate faculty members, some of them might be starting in the spring because you're just getting around to them and that's good too. So for all of those who are interested, just have them to complete the survey. Okay. And then I know on behalf of Ariel, um, we sent money um, or the contract over to Bethune Cookman mm -hmm. for you all to, um, so good news, yes. hopefully, if life is good in the spring, you all will be traveling um, for the OLC conference. I think it's in Texas this time. But if not, hopefully in the summer, our plans is to bring all of you to Nashville. You want Nashville. Uh, you, you, we going to do it in Nashville. Oh, yes. So we will be paying for um, you and two of your faculty members to come to Nashville for a couple of days for a live conference. Hmm. Hmm. And right. if you have any of your faculty members ready to present, and again, no stress, we just wanna know how are you using OER? or share with us lessons learned. We would love to highlight you all in November. And again, we're talking about 30 minutes and it could be one, two or three 
but we just want to hear what's going on in you using OER, in which we will take care of, Dr. Westwhite, all of the arrangements, all. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll create some kind of um, gamification of these tasks to decide okay. these two faculty members who will travel with me to Nashville next summer. We may do a, um, what I can't think of the name of the show where they try to jump from thing to thing and the things pop out. Oh, uh, uh, are you talking about um, the red balls? Uh, <laughs> uh, you all know, come on, where's my You know, team? like the teams uh, and they're why, trying, um, gladiator. Wipe out or wipe what? out. Wipe out. Wipe out. I don't think anybody ready for gladiators or <laughs> American Ninja Warrior. Only I Navy. remember those. <laughs> yeah, four no. might be ready for that, but the rest of us on wipe out. <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not ready for a gladiator. Like, whoop. Yeah, but I'm going to figure out some way. Some way. <laughs> yes. So again, we don't want to hold you. We just want to be able to share our updates because again, we have Dr. Robert Hassel, who is bringing up the student part. Mm -hmm. And at this time, a lot of students are unaware that we have all of these resources that they can tap in on. True. So we'll be having um, um, a student um come together with oer and um i just want to let you know um our vp signed that contract and i emailed it back today okay good so you get your money life is good holidays coming <laughs> I, know. Okay. I know they felt like yeah 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 she keep telling us she keep telling us we getting what? some swag bags no uh -uh. <laughs> money the money's been there but they all know the bureaucracy. Oh, they know. To the get that money to you all. They know. They understand. They're not. Yeah. They're not they stressed. The money's in the bank. They know one day it'll pop up, and you go, "What?" <laughs> right. <laughs> and what's the saying? When it comes, it's because you were in need right there. Absolutely. True. <laughs> Very true. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, any other questions regarding OER, where are we going? And I'm here to share on, on behalf of the state of Tennessee, our whole state, higher education is moving towards OER. Oh, wow. I got OER. one question, uh, Dr. Smith from Simmons. Um, and you might have you already spoke on this earlier, but um, does the OER platform conflict with Canvas uh, LMS at all? Uh, no, it integrates right in, whether it's Canvas, Blackboard, D2L, Desire to Learn, or if you're not using anything. When I'm using, I'm teaching three classes right now. Mm -hmm. So I just take links and just put it in my modules where the students just can link. And it goes but back to- uh -huh. There are places that have integrated um, OER right into the platform, but the links works great. Uh, perfect. Thanks. Yes. And uh, we did a, um, a webinar on how to implement it also into Canva if you want to go that route as well. So I'm about to put a link in the chat um, so you can take a look at that webinar. Uh, Dr. Golden Bethune-Cookman. Uh, I've been employing the links into the modules as well, uh, but I've been trying to uh, uh, learn how to compile the uh, the book for a particular class, um, and I haven't been able to figure that one out. Uh, okay, so you want to take like um, a whole ebook. Right, well, and, articles out of a book and splice a book together. You said that that was okay. possible. Yes. On the OER platform that we would be able for a particular class, if we wanted an article, if we wanted yes. to, yeah, compile articles and to enter one document. 
Yes, oh. you could do that in um in um, Content Builder in Merlot. Yes, let right. me. Are, are you, you got them? I, I can share. Okay, good. Okay. And then I'm gonna put the link is if when you go, she's going to Merlot. Okay. And she's going right there, create materials with content builder. Okay. So let's say if I had um an e esports class. I'm just saying that because I already created a <laughs> created one for the esports class. So mm -hmm. Let's say if I wanted to go ahead and embed links into this platform, I can easily do so. I can put it in the title. I could type in a description of whatever I'm asking them to do. And then I can put the link as well as the homework assignment. And then you can add on um, more pages if you like. Um, you can add and do different uh, ways to set up the page as well. And then you can make it a live, um, a live website for your students or a live page that your students can go to. But you can house literally everything in here and type out the description of what exactly you want the, um, the students to do. And then to, you know, the, the actual directions. And then go ahead and put in the links that you're um, requesting about or talking about. And then when they get done in the directions, you can say, after you click on this link, review it, and then please do this assignment below and then you can write the assignment below the link and then you can move on to the next link and afua i'm going yes, to um share my screen and i'm sharing my screen and i'm going to share exactly what he's asking and what you just highlighted i went to um create materials and content builder Mm -hmm. And you will see, I, uh oh, hold on, everyone. Let me go back. So you can see I did a couple of courses. Okay, here's one right here. And then I want to take you to, um, my, I did one on early childhood technology tools. I'm going to go ahead and view it. And I created this whole course and pulling out different sites, pulling out different videos, taking a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and mm -hmm. created an entire course for students to follow with assignments. And you see how, and again, this was an early childhood um, course mm -hmm. that I, again, uh, Dr. Golden, I just pull um, articles like here's one article, here's a video, mm -hmm. and you'll see um, all together she had 20 something, yeah, 20 uh, artifacts. Okay. And I just did that. Uh, and, it's, and I use, they give you a template in Merlot, and mm -hmm. it was just cut and paste like PowerPoint, cut mm -hmm. and paste click here, bring this video in, and you see um, exactly even my YouTube video. I'm Lisa Hansel, the editor-in-chief of NAEYC. And it didn't okay. even take you away from the page, which is really nice as well. Okay. So again, we're here to share with you. We're not just trying to like, you know, this is, we're actually using this mm -hmm. and trying out different tools. Okay. And in terms of time and effort, what you um, viewed a few minutes ago, that entire platform where I was pulling and whatever, um, putting it together was easy. It was just, I had to go and get um, sources here, sources there, but the actual hands-on and putting it together, it was like a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. But we'll teach you that too. We'll walk you through. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. so up to this point, I've been using the bookmarks and just uh, copying the links uh, of the assignments or the material that I wanted to expose the student to and mm -hmm. put it in the module. 
and I was wondering if it was as as you explained uh, a page with mm -hmm. the entire semester uh, of assignments with links and uh, other information for the student that I want to expose the student to on yes. one page. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know if you can see right, my plus, right? The plus you just add, put the plus and upload. Yep. The, yes, just you're putting the plus. That. okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's what the plus means. Like, okay, right. you see, when I okay. hit the plus, right? You see, you mm -hmm. want to bring in a header, you want to bring in a website, you want to bring in whatever, whatever. Uh, Even okay. you want to bring in Merlot materials, and when I click that, it gives me, and then I just click on what I want. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll experiment with that. Okay, but we'll remember we life is good, and okay. then I'm gonna show you my preview. You just hit preview. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll remember that. <laughs> oh, okay. Excuse my house is teched out <laughs> with all sorts of robots and stuff. So <laughs> certain things. That's why you saw me look around because I'm the only one here but you heard this other things going off. So again, you see how easy it was. You see, upload this accessibility link here. So that's how we were able to do that. One so of the like things I shared with Dr. Golden yesterday during the um, OER Minute was if he found a book that he liked somewhere, um, we downloaded it and opened it in Adobe because um, we all we have the Acrobat. And so we were able to extract, or at least we, in theory, we know how to do it, um, extract just the chapter he wanted from the whole, you know, that document, and then bring it to, so that he doesn't have to present the whole book to the students and say, read pages 20 to 30. Although, you know, it's a free book, it's there. It, 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 making it as simple as possible yes, it, seems to help everybody. So yes, it was yes. just an extra step. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's the again that's the um, purpose of OER is to bring together things that we want under the Creative Commons license that we can do. So other questions. If not, Dr. West White, just know, as Dr. Amphildu noted, we have even office hours, you know, or just give us an email and say, you know what, I really want you all to walk me through how to pull from here and there, mm -hmm. or what are some other OER sites? Because remember, if you don't find it in Merlot, it could be within the 250 the OER organizations in higher ed. Remember, we go out and we help search for you. So Dr. Patel, if you have something and you be like, you know, I don't have time to search and see if they have, we have the people who will do that. And they will send it to you like, this is what we found. And then you decide if you want to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So life is good. Mm -hmm. And I'll make sure I share those hours. Yes, we want to make this as painless as possible. But the goal is reducing the num the cost for textbook. And Afua, did you share with them that slide that you pulled regarding our current, how much we saved in one class? No, ma'am, I have not. But I can, uh, would you like to do the honor? No, I want you to do the honor. Okay. Um, just this fall, with 31 faculty members, just being able to use 31 faculty members and them having to implement OER in their classroom, we have been able to save our students $81,000 this fall semester, just with 31 faculty members saying that, yes, they'll do OER. So we have been so excited knowing that we just that small percentage so of faculty members that large of a difference we made inside mm -hmm. of our students' lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, and last but not least, 
Um, we have Dr. Quinetta Parkley. And we're going to push OER with our alumni. They're not even in school, but guess what? They are lifelong learners. And with that, they need to know that as part of all of the initiative, they too can go into OER and pick up information and new and new data um, regarding their career areas. So we're pushing, and that's the word, and promoting skills commons. So a full, and where is Quinetta? Quinetta, life is yes, good. Yes, ma'am. I'm it's here. <laughs> She's our new um, director and looking at alumni. So here's a good uh, alumni strategy, Dr. West White. We are now saying to our alumni that you are also part of OER. And whatever you're doing, we have OER workforce and careers. That's free. And Dr. Ampadu, if you would bring up Skills Commons and share your screen. So now that they are out in the workforce, they can go to this site, which is OER workforce, everyone. And let's type in nursing. Okay. Again, they can go right here and find the latest information in the industry in their career area. Not only that, if you scroll down, they now can find syllabi, presentations, publications, simulation, case studies, online courses, offline courses, um, credential type. And if you click on the first one over on the right, just to give them an example. Um, this top one? Yes. Uh-huh. Transition to nursing. Let's say they're in the nursing field. Mm -hmm. They're able to go in, click, and now they have a full course, syllabi. And again, Dr. Golden, you see how we even have it broken up, where if you go back up a few minutes, they can just download the syllabus or just this chapter or that chapter. This is a wonderful value for the alumni. And we're bringing our alumni into OER saying as part of the institution, you too at any time can access these materials. Yes, it's definitely important to reskill and retool our alumni so they are the best in their fields. So, so how do we reach that site? I will put that in, in the chat for you. I mm -hmm. love you, Dr. Golden. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th this is a part of Merlo? Yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh. And this is also part of the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor contacted um, Merlo and said, we need a OER workforce and careers portal. And that's what they did. So it's called skillscommons.org. Yes, okay. Michaela has put it in the chat for us. But, but, but can I reach this site through yes. my Merlo account? Oh, excellent. Yes, Yes, um, Afor, go back to Merlot because I had shared with Jerry we needed to do that. It is. And there it is right there on the top. Yay, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Go all, uh uh, it's on the menu. You see where you say, Hi, Dr. Afua? Yes. On that line, go move oh. up to the left. It's to the left. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, right here. Yeah, there okay. you go. Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay. Life is good. Mm hmm. So we will end by sharing with you that and Dr. and my team is not aware of this. Um, Dr. Chisholm and I met this morning, this morning, because we are going to reach out to the community. And when I say community, I'm talking about organizations that support our 
HBCU institution. We're starting with the first NAACP. I want you to know that there is a national letter, a letter that went to the national office to let the NAACP know about open education resources. We are also um, Afua, Juanetta, Michaela, Ike, Robert, team. On behalf of Deborah and Robbie Melton, we're going to the Nashville NAACP and scheduling a meeting to let them know of open education resources. We want to empower our community. Uh, question, what kind of uh, uh, kickback or uh, what kind of uh, uh, any discussion about what OER is doing to the, the bookstores uh, as a, 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 a financial resource for our school? You know, I can answer that. Oh, there's kickback. But the kickback is coming down to just like a little kick now. Before, it was a major pushback. And let me share with you why. That's something that we didn't know until we got into it. Many institutions receive a commission off the bookstores. Mm -hmm. In other words, the more books students buy, the more of a commission that will go back to that institution. We're talking about some real money here. So with OER coming in talking about free textbook, even the institutions were kind of fighting us until we conducted a study on behalf of the state of California and found out, you know, at the bookstore, they're not really selling books. Right. Those students are going to Amazon and other places. What they're selling are little trinklets, you know, like little t-shirts. Um, and they were making more money off of t-shirts, um, Oreo cookies, all of the little things in a bookstore versus books. So after we share, you're not gonna lose a lot. Then the companies, Dr. Golden, started fighting us. Mm. Well, after states like California, Wyoming, Oregon, and Colorado went and got a mandate from their legislatures to say, you all will use OER first, or we're going to cut funding. Then the publishers start coming out with OER. Pearson, McGraw-Hill, even Elsevier. If you look at their books now, they'll say, our books are open, but you have to buy the student guide, the lab, and the supplementary. So you see how they're getting around? Yes. Mm -hmm. But last- what about Sage? Oh, what about Sage publication? I'm not sure about Sage, but I'm sure my team will find out. Okay. Because now they're offering a lot of free, but I'm going to tell you what broke, what, okay, the straw that with the camel, MIT. When MIT eight years ago said to the world, all of our content free, that's when everyone went, okay, we got to do a change. And I'll end with, on November the 5th, tentatively, you'll get an email like maybe tomorrow, MIT is going to partner with the HBCU OER initiative in presenting all of their content to us. The whole thing, not just part, the whole MIT. Mm -hmm because they want our content too. Don't think it's a one-way street. Don't think we don't have anything to give. They heard that we had a cultural collection and MIT contacted us to say, can we partner? That's a plus. Okay. 
You're doing a good job. Let us highlight some of the work that you all are doing. Any last questions, comments? Well, you all must be hungry. Just remember, the day the world opens up again, Nashville is the place we have the food. <laughs> yes, we do. And I also went ahead and picked the link for the HBCU cultural collection inside the chat. I was about to ask. Thank you. No problem at all. Okay. You all take care. Just know life is good. Um, COVID is still out there. Mm -hmm. Share mm -hmm. with everyone. And again, I hope to see you all in Nashville, Tennessee. We can do it. Okay, <laughs> thanks, TSU team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Take care. Okay, Thank take care. Thank you. Good to see each of you.